Programming is an interesting profession. A good programmer plans ahead, problem solves, builds a collection of useful resources, and creates modular systems that are easy to iterate upon and debug, all while focusing on optimization and potential automation. Why am I telling you this? Well, two reasons. One, because it ties into the skills required to excel at Factorio, and two, because I am not a good programmer. Do you have a STEM degree or similar mental affliction? Maybe you enjoy RTS games, but find yourself thinking, this would be better if it was SimCity. Perhaps you're Eastern European, or maybe you're just this guy. The 1953 EA. Regardless, please follow me into this dark alley and allow me to give you your first free hit of Factorio. Factorio is a base building and resource management simulator with a focus on automation. It's also secretly a time management simulator because your time management in real life is about to be in shambles. We play as the engineer, a cryptid that doesn't need food or water to survive, only production. Using this very average German, we need to build an automation factory, and to do this, we're going to become more obsessed with belts than an anime protagonist so that we can accomplish more insertions than a sounding enthusiast, all while negotiating peace with the local wildlife, at least the kind you rest in. Our main goal is to build a rocket and escape from the planet, preferably before the biters can escape the blood from our body. Now, in order to beat this invisible ticking clock, we're going to need to outpace the production of most small countries, but before we can go about recreating a Bible-accurate Detroit, we're going to be building boilers in our pockets, erecting malls to shop in, and stockpiling WMDs for freedom reasons. It's going to be quite a journey, so say goodbye to grass and strap in as we start to cover... We start a new game, and we're given a few presets to pick from. You can play the tutorial, free mode, or a few different scenarios. Should you play the tutorial? Yes. Will it teach you the basics of the game? Also yes. Will it teach you well? No. That's what Troopin' is for. So fumble through it, and then once you're done, hit free mode and settle in for the long haul. Try to get a good starting area with resources that are relatively close together and a scenic lake nearby. Ideally, you'll want to start in a grassy forested area. Why? Because fighting climate change here isn't optional. As we ramp up, so will our pollution, and Trees are the best way to fight it early on, because if they don't absorb it, something worse will. After a successful crash landing, we're in the game proper. First things first, hit Alt. If you don't, you'll be worse at the game and everyone will make fun of you. After that, we ransack the remains of our spaceship and prepare for the long road ahead. We start with some metal plates, piece of wood, drill, furnace ammo. Using these simple ingredients, we're going to speedrun the collapse of this world's ecosystem like a methed up Koch brother. Start by plopping down a burner drill on some iron and mama birding its output directly into a furnace. Most things in this game require energy or fuel to function. In our case, we chuck one piece of wood in there and then go play Minecraft with the larger rocks for coal and stone. This will help us get more furnaces and drills, but uh-oh, we're out of fuel. Welcome to the first quarter of the game loop. We need stuff to get fuel, and we need fuel to get stuff. Right now, we're going to be and feeding a lot of stuff into other stuff, but not for long. By the way, you can feed and loot with control click or spam individual items by holding down Z. Early on, we're going to need more coal than Santa's naughty list, but as we progress, we'll move into other methods of energy. For now, we slam down a bunch of burner drills and human centipede them into one another for easy coal harvesting. Burner drills harvest coal faster than they consume it, so it's not like there's any downside to doing this. Thermodynamics can suck it. Now, the main problem that we face is that we're stupid. We don't know how to do anything, likely both in-game and in real life, but hey, at least we can fix the in-game problem. So let's build a scientific rave dome in our pocket and then get to learning. Feeding our seizure domes is the next part of the game loop, but before we can go full tilt, we're gonna need some real power. At this point, steam is our only option, so pump some water into a boiler and link it up to two steam engines. This will allow us to build a horrible DIY power grid that'll solve all of our energy problems. One pump can supply 20 boilers which can supply 40 steam engines. Why did I just tell you that? Ratios. Lots of recipes in this game can be optimized around ratios. I hope you like them, because we're about to become more obsessed with ratios than a terminally online bird app user. Ratios can get very out of hand in this game, so if you actually want to understand them, then the best advice I can give you is Good luck. Now, you may have noticed that we're building a lot of smaller things before we can make a building. That's because most things in this game require intermediate parts, which are a pain to craft in your pocket. So, let's learn automation by opening up the tech tree and... 
Uh, okay, I swear this isn't as bad as it looks. Okay, it's kind of bad, but unless you're going for a speed run, just research whatever you think looks cool. In the meantime, craft some red science packs in your pocket and then slam them into the research dome so that we can kickstart our dopamine drip. So once we have automation, we can do this setup and partially automate the production and consumption of our red science. You feel that little tickle in your prefrontal cortex? That's Factorio. Congratulations. If you've made it this far, it's already too late. You are now addicted. And if you can make it past a few of the other casual filters, it gets so much more satisfying slash worse. Okay, let's talk belts. Belts are how we're going to move stuff from one place to another. Logistics. Until you know what you're doing, it's not going to be pretty. But hey, whatever happens in the starter base stays in the starter base. If you don't like how something looks, simply lie to yourself by saying it's temporary, just like I do with my code. So get those belts spinning along with some inserters. And seriously, if you ever find yourself worrying about your build, just remember the old engineering adage. If it's stupid and it works, it isn't stupid. Once we have our basic automation set up, you may be wondering how we can take this even further. In order to scale, we're going to need a lot of plates, so let's build our first smelter column. This mess of furnaces and inserters here is going to consume a full yellow belt of iron or an output a full yellow belt of iron plates. We can do the same thing for copper and, with some modifications, steel. How does it work? I'm not going to explain it. That's for a good guide. I'm simply here to tickle your neurons and trick you into a life-ruining addiction. Placing all these inserters and belts might seem a little tedious, but... Anyway, check this out. Seeing a design come online and fill a belt is what it's all about. However, like any good addiction, we're already building a tolerance, so we're gonna need a bigger hit. Now that we're scaling, it's time to... Oh no. They found us. Okay, we're still alive, but we gotta get out of here. These resources aren't going to last forever, and these attacks are only going to get worse. You see, pollution in this game fights back. Once our pollution cloud reaches the locals, the nests start absorbing it, causing biters to spawn, which will eventually result in an all-out assault. First things first, ditch that lame-ass piece. The pistol doesn't actually shoot bullets. It shoots invitations to your gang beatdown. And if we're going to have any chance of survival, we're going to need at least as much firepower as an American Denny's. But where are we going to get our munitions, I hear you asking? Mall. We're going to need a lot of random stuff, so we're going to make like the 1980s and build a gaudy shopping center just for us. However, as this fills up, we're going to start out consuming our production, especially since I never told you to set a limit on your chests. So, how do we fix this? J B M. Just build more. Get the idea of scarcity out of your head. This is Factorio. You have near limitless space. Need more of something? Build more of it. Hey, look, it's more of the game loop. However, as scale increases, so too does our pollution. It's fine though, right? We have better guns. Heck, we can even build turrets now. Who cares if we piss off the biters? Those little pests don't stand a ch- There's the rest of our game loop. The bugs keep pace with the scale of your factory, which means we need to constantly balance production, consumption, and safety. This never-ending push-pull between these three variables is the raw powder behind Cractorio. But in order to secure our factory, we need to set up some defenses. And the best defense is a good offense. Alright, we've got moderate security, but we're depleting our starter patches and we're running out of space to fit stuff. Here's the thing, the starter base doesn't actually exist to build a rocket. It exists to produce more spaghetti than an Italian grandmother. What the hell is this? Unless you really know what you're doing, the starter base is quickly going to become an unmanageable sprawl that you can no longer comprehend. So let's hop in our car and abandon this place like it's my secret backup family. We scout out a nice plot of land and accelerate deforestation using grenades while helping any locals adjust to our arrival. Destroying their nests is probably fine. What are they gonna do? Double evolve? That'd be stupid. Foreshadowing is a literary device and now that we've got bigger patches and decent space, it's time to switch to a main bus design. This allows us to pull any mix of items to an automation factory on the side of the bus with minimal effort using splitters and undergrounds. This means we can easily maximize 
is our spaghetti. We're going to be using a series of four rows of belts to transport the common ingredients used in most recipes. This includes iron and copper plates and steel beams, but also common intermediates like gears, circuits, plastic, and even liquids if you're smarter than me. Speaking of liquids, it's time to become a real country and start producing oil. Oil tends to be where a lot of people bounce off this game, but it's pretty simple. Don't cross the streams and use underground pipes where possible. You have automated pipes by now, yeah? We need oil to unlock new intermediate parts and fuel our fancy new flamethrower turrets. Later, once we've unlocked advanced oil processing, we'll need to manage several different types of liquid outputs as well. This can be a bit of a pain to keep separate, so just use a design like this. You can process it at your base or at the refining site, but that's up to you. I tend just to run a long series of underground pipes back to my base and process it there. You could use trains, but trains are overcomplicated and lame. I really don't see much benefit to them. Train people are weirdos. Yeah, listen to that bell. Anyway, once you have your three type of liquid outputs, you have to make sure that they're all getting consumed, otherwise your refineries will back up. So produce rocket fuel, crack some of the light oil into petroleum, and convert heavy oil into enough lube to kickstart a sketchy massage parlor. Now it should be smooth sailing from here until the rocket comes online, so... Aw, oh, come on! Okay, so it turns out that destroying biter nests massively impacts their evolution factor, causing the bug nests to go from reasonable to average Toronto apartment. Without better ammo and upgrades, our gun turrets aren't going to cover us. Flamethrower turrets are great and laser turrets are better, but we're not producing enough power yet to rely on them. Now, at this point, you might be tempted to wall yourself in. And sure, a bitch box might offer a modicum of protection, but it's going to be a huge hindrance when you actually need to expand. Instead of setting up a cuck cage, simply build some pill boxes around the usual attack routes and save the walls for future mining and pumping outposts that you know you won't be expanding. Okay, so the clock is really ticking now and we need serious power. Our boilers are barely keeping up with demand and obliterating our coal supply in the process. It's time to go green, but before we can do that, we need to talk about blueprints. You may have noticed some ghost buildings throughout this video that I've been using as a guideline for some of the larger construction projects. That's because you can copy and paste building patterns you've made with Control c and Control v and even save them for later. The only problem is that you still actually have to build everything, but what if we didn't? Say hello to our idiot labor force. Bots require a Robo port to operate out of and will build any blueprint in their range so long as they have access to the required materials. This means we can come up with simple, tileable designs that can be placed over and over again. Tileable solar power, for example. We simply build a basic starter, copy, and whoa. Bots allow us to exponentially scale our building potential. But wait, there's more! Blueprints can be saved for later, but more importantly, they can be shared. Wouldn't it be crazy if there was a website where like-minded weirdos could come up with optimized designs that they could share with the community and then iterate upon based on feedback and new ideas? Okay, so if you've made it this far and thought, man, this game looks cool, but I hate coming up with my own solutions. Well, I hear you, fellow coder. And that's where factorioprints.com comes in. Enjoy the Stack Overflow experience complete with snipes comments about optimization, but for blueprints. And good luck trying to debug these if something goes wrong. You're trading convenience for understanding, and believe me, it can cost you. Armed with all this, we should be able to build all sciences, scale up our production, and slowly start on a rocket. And to do this, we're going to need modules. Modules require a lot of circuits. I know you think you know what a lot means, but double what you're thinking. Okay, now quadruple it. Alright, now you're halfway to what we need. Welcome to the endless circuit shortage. Even with all we have right now, it's not enough. Trying to make the required circuits off a single patch is going to leave us more iron deficient than an anemic child. We're going to need more mining, more processing, and more more power. This is where outposts come in. After manifesting our destiny across the planet and setting up well-defended outposts, we can process everything on site and transport it back. However, this is a massive pain in the ass to do across belts. I guess we could try building just one train, just to see if it makes things any easier. What, what happened? How did I... What, what is all this? Oh my god, it's... It's so automated. It's so efficient. It's far from perfect, and I, I have no idea what's happening with this trainstrosity, but look at it. I'm sorry, train guy. I, I judged you too harshly. Fuck. 
They've evolved again. Uh, we need to leave. With all our production, we've managed to build the required RCUs, rocket fuel, and low-density structures required to leave this world behind. That's it, ready to go. Take one final look at all you've built in the lead-up to this moment. Look how far you've come. Sure, we didn't research everything, and that's fine. We'll finally be safe. We can finally return to... To... Wait, I mean, who even was I before all of this? Just some cog in the machine? But here, I am the machine. This factory, this is my legacy. Before all of this, I was nothing, but now... Why should I be the one to give up this world? Because of some pests? No, it's mine. These resources are mine. This planet is unprocessed and I must be the one to refine it. The factory must grow! It was never about winning, it's about sending a message. This planet is alive, and I'm going to teach it fear. And to do that, we're going to be expanding harder than a furry artist trying to make rent. First things first, power. Solar isn't going to cut it, so now it's time for the funny green rocks. To start, we need to get our hands on enough uranium-235 that the government puts us on a no-fly list. Easier said than done, because when mining uranium, we have a high chance of getting uranium-238, but only a 0.7% chance of getting uranium-235. Hope you started this several hours ago, because now it's time for the Covarex enrichment process. This requires 40 U-235 to start and consumes some U-238 for a single additional piece of U-235. Fun fact, it's named after the game's lead developer and works by exposing the uranium-238 to the radioactive yikes that is his reddit posts. With this little stockpile, we can fuel a nuclear plant with the same safety precautions as Chernobyl. And just like that, we go from measuring our power in megawatts to gigawatts. But why stop at one power plant? We've automated everything we need. Reshape the land, destroy a lake, and make an even bigger power plant. We can use nuclear power to fuel our trains, vehicles, and peacekeeping efforts. Back at home, we've been building satellites to begin the infinite grind of space science. We may not be going up there, but they sure are. We get a thousand science per launch, but why stop at satellites? Launch a fish, hell, launch a car for all I care. More rocket silos, more RCUs, more everything. Scale up our circuit production to an absurd degree and consume them like the Doritos. Size does matter, and anyone that tells you otherwise is a bottom, and I'm always on top of my game. Next, we automate the spider evangelions. Get in the robot, NG. <laughs> Finally, let's complete our arsenal. Personal lasers, machine guns with depleted uranium ammo, rocket launchers filled with extinction tubes. Let's rally the squad with an end of the world concert. All that's left to do is a world tour, so let's hop in our nuclear DJ booth and start this damn light show. And you know what? I'm sick of their drive-bys. Let's see how they like it. If they want to expand and try and chew through my oil pipelines and mining facilities, that's fine. The transport train now comes equipped with a fun little surprise. Say hello to the pain train. Now, if only there was a good song for firing a big fucking gun. And with that, there's none left to stand in our way. My factory is going to metastasize across this planet and refine it until the very last impurity has been deatomized. But it's always nice to remember where you started from. Always good to remind yourself of the old times, so... Say hello to your new home, old friend. I will devolve you into nothing, remold you until your shape is an obscene travesty of its original form. Isolated, disconnected, and alone. A final punctuation at the end of your line. I will return to the stars, but you? You will exist here, choking on my pollution for all time. Every gasp a wretched reminder that you are a speck beneath a god. Unable to die, unable to scream, but always aware that I won. Oh my god, he's f***ing losing it entirely! Factorio is an amazing game about using creative problem solving to increase our productivity and commit war crimes, mostly in the field of architecture. What the hell is even that? 
Is it overcomplicated? Yes and no. It demands a lot of you, but it doesn't waste your time. You really get out of it what you're willing to put in, and I love it for that. Do you need to go as far as I did? No. I spent 200 hours exacting revenge on pixels shaped like bugs. The fact that you're still listening to me honestly reflects more poorly on you than it does on me. Now, if you want to actually learn how to play the game, I'd highly encourage you to watch Troopin. This video would not have happened without his first hour in Factorio video. And please, check out the most positive and high energy computer engineer known to man, Dosh Doshington. His Death World stuff is actually inspirational. Also, if you want really in-depth guides and blueprints, definitely check out Nihilus. And of course, honorable mentions go to Ambiguous Amphibian and Martin Cytopants for hilarious Factorio content. Now, let's talk mods. This game was designed by programmers and basically made for programmers, so naturally, there's a ton of mods for it. There are so many ways for you to tweak the game exactly to your liking and keep things interesting and fresh. And the overhaul mods on this game are honestly on another level. If you really hate your free time, you should absolutely check out Space Exploration and Crastorio, and if you really just hate yourself, check out C Block. Finally, I have to address a bit of an elephant in the room. The lead developer of this game kind of sucks. I truly hope they've had a redemption arc since their controversy, but I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending this game without acknowledging it. So, to balance the scales, I've done what any reasonable person would do in this situation. I learned Lua out of spite and made a mod that lets you be gay and select pronouns. GitHub link in the description. Anyway, that's it for now. I'd really like to make some other videos to fill the long gaps in between the guides, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments. No! I have a lot of thoughts on a very specific genre of games, but we'll see. Milk you. More videos to come, but until then, I'm going to factory stomp some bugs on another world. Have a great day, and stay safe out there. Oh god, they evolved again.